Hey. Uh, so I did something kind of a little bit different today. Um, I ran to the gym for my training, which uh, is about 10 kilometers. Um, and then took a taxi back. <laughs> if I weren't my friend Kara, I would have run back too, but it's middle of the day when I'm done training and was, was not going to be a good run back. Um, but since my training has changed, like I'm not on the same schedule as I was years ago when everything was just kind of like, you know, you, you go at five in the morning and it's all this kind of thing. I'm like between different gyms, um, at different times and sparring and all these different things. So it's just been harder for me to like find time mm, regularly for me to get my runs in, which to me is really important for, uh, keeping your calluses and tolerances and, and being able to fight in the way that I want to fight. Um, I did a technique vlog about uh, packing your ice axe, <laughs> which is what uh, I call it when you're getting your runs in, even though if you feel like it's not serving you or it's not necessary, that eventually it is. And it's really important. So that is all just to say that uh, it's important for me to get my runs in. And uh, I've been getting them in kind of different ways, different times, like not the same thing all the time. And I'm not running with a group anymore. So I used to run with the gym. Um, in the morning and then maybe, you know, something by myself kind of near my house um, in the evening, this kind of thing. But uh, a couple months ago, um, Kevin was taking his bicycle and I was running. So he was on his bicycle and I'm running and we like went down this particular out and back uh, to near where we live that it was nice like to um, have this kind of like path. And even when we were going together, like even on our first uh, excursion doing that when we came back we kind of looked at each other and we're like yeah I couldn't do that run alone but it's nice that we can do it together uh, and he hasn't been riding his bike with me so I had to find uh, kind of older routes like doing these routes that I was doing before that are a little bit safer because I'm running by myself um, I just we both got kind of like this vibe on this um, on this out and back that we were doing together that's like when Kevin's with me on the bicycle it's okay uh, but I wouldn't do it alone so I'm kind of upset because this morning um, when I was running to the gym, I left at like 8 a.m. Like this is not a like wee hours of the morning before dawn like kind of thing at all. Um, from where I live to get down to kind of the center of Patia, you basically run along the train tracks, um, which is kind of a highway, but not a highway. It's like an it's like internal to the main highway that runs through Patia. So there's definitely traffic on it all the time, but it's not like heavy traffic. Um, so it feels a little bit safer, but there's no sidewalks or anything like that. Um, it's 10 kilometers for me to get from my front door to the gym. And uh, probably one kilometer out as I'd like turned onto the train tracks, uh, this guy on a motorbike kind of like pulled over in front of me next to this cafe. It's like a dog cafe. Um, and he like watched me as I passed. And I was like, all right, I, I know it's weird to have like this frog running at hours that people don't run in Thailand. <laughs> like, in Thailand, people run when there's no sun, so it's gonna be like early morning or kind of evening, you know, four or five, usually more like five, six kind of thing. Um, so I acknowledge that he's there and I don't acknowledge him, but like I check it and I, I pass him. And again, this is like, there's no sidewalks. So I'm like running along the road, there's traffic passing me, this kind of thing. And uh, a good ways past where I had passed him, like probably another like, kilometer and a half, maybe two kilometers from where I first saw him, he actually pulled up next to me uh, in traffic, like as I was going. And um, I had started to walk because there's this little intersection part that I didn't want to like just run in front of a car or something. So I started to walk and that's when he pulled in front of me. And I had my headphones in, but I could tell what he was saying to me through his mask was something about like, do I need a ride? And I was friendly. I was like, no, I'm running. Thank you. Uh, and I just kept going kind of thing. Um, and then when I would like turn my head to, you know, check traffic because I had to like go around a bush or something like this, I kept seeing that he was like behind me a little bit, like behind me enough that like he probably thought I didn't know he was behind me, but like close enough that he's clearly following me. So clear, this is pretty unnerving. I'm not happy about this. Um, so I was trying to think to myself, like, what can I do to kind of like make sure that uh, I'm in a safe place, but also like I don't want this guy following me. Uh, and I ended up like taking a taking a little road turn that would get me to the main highway. When I get to the main highway, there's sidewalks, so I can actually run against traffic, which means he can't follow me anymore because I'm going to be going against traffic on the side of the road. So uh, there's no way he can do this on a motorbike. So I ended up doing this, and it's a pretty long little like 
road over to uh, the main highway. It's uh, maybe like seven, eight minutes from where uh, I decided to do the turnover. And um, again, as I was like turning my head because I needed to cross the street, I saw that he was behind me again and he looked a little bit surprised that I had like turned to see him. So I did end up losing this guy by getting on the main highway and running in the opposite against traffic thing. I didn't see him again. Nothing happened, whatever. And I was trying to like think about the possible motives, explanations kind of thing. Like this guy's not necessarily nefarious, right? Like he might have actually taken it upon himself to follow me for my protection kind of thing. You'll see this when like Nakamoy go out running. Um, they always have a guy on a motorbike behind them. Uh, that's usually to like make sure the boys run, but it's also to protect against dogs and kind of like uh, they work as a little bit of a safety net for traffic because you see the motorbike and then you're aware of the runners and this kind of thing. So like best case scenario, this guy like took it upon himself to kind of be a chaperone to me or something. On this same road, like on the same uh, train track road, um, I was coming home once in a terrible rainstorm. Like it was just blackout rainstorm. And there was a, a older woman on a motorbike in front of me who was driving really, really slow because of all of the rain, but she had no lights. Like she had no taillights, she had no headlights. So this is really dangerous. And so she was driving really slow for her own protection, but also uh, people actually tend to drive faster in the rain because they're trying to like get home. They're trying to get out of it. I didn't interact with her at all, but I slowed down, got behind her and turned my hazard lights on and basically just followed her until the turnoff, which was long, <laughs> it was very long. I don't know if she knew I was there ever, but like my intentions were good. Um, sometimes people are just looking out for each other. So it's possible, possible that this guy was like, this is not a super safe road. I'm going to take it upon myself to kind of like protect this Ferrang kind of thing. That's a possibility. I still didn't like being followed. Women don't generally like being followed. Um, the other possibility, given that he offered me a ride, is one that I don't really want to talk about, which is that now I don't feel really safe running on that road by myself, even though there are so many cars. When I was deciding that I was going to take this turn and get onto the main highway, which obviously there's going to be lots of people on the main highway and I can go against traffic, which was like my main escape hatch, I was really worried as I was going onto this uh, cut over to the main highway because I'm like, I don't know how much traffic there is on that little cutaway. So as I was like getting close to it, as I was deciding, is this where my turn is gonna be? I was totally monitoring like how many cars and motorbikes are coming out or going in through that intersection to see whether that was even a safe turn off for me to be making. So this is kind of just to say that uh, when I was up at Lana and uh, there were two rings, there was the men's ring and then there's the ring that women were allowed in. Can't even call it a women's ring, it just women were allowed in there. A lot of the men didn't even realize that there was an exclusion going on. Like it just didn't even occur to them because they weren't being excluded. So I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not trying to be like, Thailand's not safe. You can't do this, you can't do that. But honestly, the world is kind of unsafe and women have to have, people socialize as women have to have a lot of awareness. Like I was aware of that guy on his first little turnover and I don't know that everyone would have seen that, but I do feel like people socialized as women in this world would see that immediately because we've been kind of um, conditioned through being taught, but also through our own experiences to be really hyper aware of that kind of thing. Um, and so while you're kind of adventuring out and you're, you're kind of like, I'm a fighter, I'm strong, I'm doing all of these things, you also have to be hyper aware of um, limitations that you have. And that's actually really painful um, and psychologically upsetting uh, when you come up upon these limitations that you're like, I just have to be careful. Like I have to be careful in a way that other people don't have to be careful. And, and um, the laws don't necessarily protect you in situations like this. And, and I don't, when I got to the gym, I actually looked up what is 911 in Thailand. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that number is. It's 1155 if you're watching this uh, video. That's the tourist police. So that's that's who you should call uh, if you have a, like, semi-emergency situation and you need an English speaker. Um, you can also call 191 in Thailand. That's, like, 911. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I'm kind of bummed about that. I'm bummed that, like, my morning, my run, my, like, adventure some new run I'm gonna run myself to my gym was um otherwise a really good experience <laughs> like it was a nice run and uh, I felt pretty strong about it and, and it actually felt kind of interesting to be running that late in the morning um but while nothing happened it was like this really unsettling like now I'm gonna be kind of like checking myself 
on my runs. Um, so, you know, be safe out there. And, and if you've had experiences like this, uh, I see you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the world's like this. It sucks. Um, but also be safe. Unfortunately, as much as you want to be like, fuck you, I'm just going to do what I want to do because that's the way it should be. That's not the way it actually is. So be safe. I'm glad nothing happened. And uh, I'm actually just making this video to talk about being a little bit bummed out because sometimes I do that. <laughs> Bye.